There are times when traveling that you just get a sense that you don't deserve what nature has put on your table for that day. Eco Palm's house is one of those places. Eco Palm's house is a small retreat style hotel, seven kilometers from the center of Sapa in a small village named Lao Chai. An easy 15 minute drive along a beautiful mountain road. I give fair warning to anybody that's watching, if you don't love mountains, rice terraces, and sunsets, then this video, and Sapa in general, might not be for you. The small property is spread out with around 15 accommodations of various levels. The grounds are impeccably maintained and clearly the pride of the owners truly showing through at Eco Palms. Inside the main house, you'll find the reception area as well as the restaurant, both of which offer incredible views out over the rice terraces. The interior may be a bit busy looking, but I assure you that every single item in that house has its own place and is handled with great care. The accommodations at Eco Palms are various types of freestanding bungalows. On their website, the bungalow I stayed in is referred to as a romantic bungalow. I'm assuming that's because of the bathtub, but to be honest, I think any of the bungalows without handrails on the terrace are equally great. The interior is very basic in the best of ways. If you want TVs, super fast Wi-Fi, air conditioning, etc, etc, this just isn't the place for you. There are many modern and accommodating hotels in Sapa proper that have all of them, but here, I'm pretty grateful that they were missing. The bungalow is complete with a surprisingly really comfortable queen-size bed. The bed itself has a heating pad underneath and a mosquito net, but the weather was perfect during my stay in April 2021, so neither were needed. What caught my attention about this place to begin with though, was this very bungalow. The exterior is made of bamboo, the interior of traditional mudding techniques that you don't see that much these days, with a basic timber structure. Equally captivating to me, maybe more so, were the floors and the terraces without handrails. I don't care if they're uneven to walk on, I absolutely love these floors. As for the terrace, 
You're only two meters off the ground, and the only thing that a handrail is going to do is block your view when you're sitting in bed. The room is also outfitted with a simple but sufficient open wardrobe, as well as a welcome fan and space heater. Tea and instant coffee is also available along with a pitcher of purified water. I'm not bothered by the instant coffee in a place like this, but that's not to say that I didn't bring my own pour over brewer either. The bathroom for the most part is clean and basic, but when you have a wooden bathtub with a view like this, I don't think anyone cares what the toilet looks like to be honest. I sure don't. The room also has two beanbag chairs that are surprisingly comfortable and easy to move from inside to outside. And then there's the view. I'll let you just enjoy that for a bit. A quick note about Sapa in general. It's far. I mean, it's really far from just about all of Vietnam. The capital of the province is on the border with China, and there's no airport. You have a few options to get here from Hanoi. By road, you can take a limo van for around $20 per person, a VIP sleeper bus for around $15, or a normal sleeper bus for around $10. Or you could take the night train from Hanoi to Lao Cai for anywhere from $5 to $200 per person. The buses are five hours from Hanoi directly to Sapa. The train is eight hours overnight from Hanoi to Lao Cai, plus an additional hour from the train station to the town of Sapa. If you have the time, I'd recommend four to six nights in the area, splitting your accommodation between a bungalow like Eco Palms and a more centrally located hotel. Dinner was certainly not the usual fare. I was generously invited to join the family for dinner, and it was spectacular. River trout sashimi rolls, commonly referred to as local salmon, forest chicken hot pot with a different cut of the delicious trout, all rounded out with a massive amount of homebrew strawberry wine. The proof of it, I'm not sure anyone knows. Either way, it was fantastic dinner and far beyond what I'd normally expect from an accommodation like this. The next morning came sooner than it felt like it should have, possibly because of the wine, but you'll be greeted with what seems like a completely different view. This time of the year in the mornings, the valley is filled with bright greens and yellows, towards dusk, forest greens and blues. Breakfast was a simple affair, but the coffee was unlimited, so I really have no complaints. After breakfast, we go for a bit of a walk around the property. The owners here are doing what a lot of small hotel owners are doing throughout Vietnam right now, and I'm assuming throughout the rest of the world, if they have the means to do it. Expanding or renovating. You can see why there really isn't a bad bungalow that could be chosen. 
though I still do maintain that mine was the best. We are really quickly at the end of this tour already, and as always, I genuinely hope you enjoyed it and learned something for your next trip to Vietnam. For lots more content on the way, a thumbs up and a subscribe to the channel would be massively appreciated. Stay tuned for the flip-flop score. <laughs>